Kitchen to the front, please, and we are ready for Donna. Good morning. Good morning. How many of you in the last year have traveled more than 300 miles from your home? How many of you walked? 300 miles? Or just, just walked? Or just walked? 300 miles. Oh, totally. So when you travel, how many miles? Uh, how many of you took a horse? Okay. A train. Mm. Oh, yeah, one train. <laughs> a car. Still not. Plane? Mm. Well, today we're going to learn about how trains cars and planes have changed our world. These inventions not only changed how you live, but where you live, and what opportunities you have. You may remember from reading in Fast Food Nation that it was actually our love of the automobile that fostered the first fast food restaurants. They drive up in their car for curbside service, drive in. I don't have to get out of my car. They'll bring my food. I can eat in my car. I love my car. Well, that's what bred the whole thing. And that's what got me thinking about what was the impact of the ways that we got around? How did that fold into the changes we saw in our society? Now, the changes that we're talking about have very highfalutin names. Industrialization simply means moving work into factories. Urbanization simply means cities grow. And globalization simply means connecting with others around the world and taking our marketing expertise to them, sharing our culture sometimes seen as good, sometimes not. My research is based primarily on two books. H. Bloomer, who was a sociology professor back east, wrote Industrialization as an Agent of Social Change. And D. Morris had a book called It's a Sprawl World After All, The Human Cost of Unplanned Growth and the Vision of a Better Future. So it all started with the railroad. Even in Phoenix, yes, this was our Union Depot. We had a Fred Harvey house. That was what they called the restaurant. It was at every major stop on the line. And what railroads did by going throughout the nation was to give us the means by which to industrialize. We could take the coal and move it to the cities. We could take the wheat and move it to the cities. We could build big factories in the cities, and then we could produce everything in the cities. So instead of a seamstress needed to be on your block in your rural village, you could have a building full of seamstresses in a big factory in Chicago. Instead of having a local meatpacking plant, because the cattle were there, you could move all the cattle to Chicago and have them butcher them all in one big place. Mm -hmm. This, unfortunately, had some downsides to it. It changed the organizations we work in. Instead of a local butcher, you have the factory butcher. Instead of a local seamstress, you have the factory seamstress. It changed the kind of groups in which people live because guess what? Those jobs all moved to the city. So the people moved to the city. Social relations changed. Where you live changed. And think about it. When you moved to the city, what happened to your church? Oh, so now you're going to go to a different church. And that church isn't just those people that moved into your little local rural village that are all kind of like you, but it's people that moved in from all over the place. So now you have this great diverse base. People start to feel alienated. 
disjointed. They start to not feel a part of their own community. Now, yes, we saw an increase in the standard of living. We saw an increase in productivity. We saw much more ease in travel and leisure. Because that was the, the bonus of the railroads. Here from, let's see, this is uh, 1908, I believe is the date on this. 1915. From 1915, this is a Milwaukee Road brochure. Milwaukee Road is the Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Paul, and Pacific Railroad. It went from Chicago to Tacoma. But they didn't just sell trips from, from the Pacific Coast back to the Chicago area. They sold well, there you got Chicago to Seattle or Tacoma. Oh, and then they'd sell you Oregon, Seattle, Tacoma, Portland, San Francisco, San Francisco to LA, LA to San Diego, LA to Salt Lake, Salt Lake to Ogden, Ogden to Council Buttes, uh, Council Bluffs, Ogden to Salt Lake City, Council Bluffs to Chicago. This was the way to get around. It was luxury. Theirs was the queen of transcontinental trains. Marvelous riding ease. Luxurious equipment. Delectable meals. This was the cat's pajamas. Everything was there for you. If you could only get to the train on time. But wait, then came cars. And with cars, my clicker. I didn't need to get to the train on time. The train took off whenever I wanted. And now, I don't have to live in those high-rise apartments in the middle of the city. I can move to the suburbs. I can have a garden. I can have the good life, everything I ever wanted. Oh, and by the way, nowadays the average American spends 15 hours a week in their car. And that which we considered freedom is now our jail. Total over the year, you will spend about five working weeks in your car on average. Suburban sprawl, further alienation. Further, moving away from a community and into our own separate little cubicle. Oh, I mean world. Indeed. Cars brought us freedom. Cars brought us mobility. And cars brought us chains. Now, a little further down the line, And all these inventions overlap. Was the airplane. Oops. This was the first airport in Los Angeles. The Grand Central Terminal of Mundell, California. Nearest airport to LA, Hollywood, Beverly Hills, or Pasadena. And now, we're not able to just get around our nation easily. We're able to get around the world. So now we're able to take those very same goods and ideas that allowed us to industrialize and put us in the urban-centric mode that we are in today and take them to the rest of the world. The good parts, we're able to go anywhere. The world is our oyster. 
Uh, the bad parts, well, other things can travel along. So you see, in essence, the automobile, the train, and the plane brought us luxury, standard of living, and a good life. They also brought, up, brought us urban blight, suburban sprawl, and the westernization of worlds that may not want to be westernized. So next time you travel, think about how you're getting there. Think about how the world might be different if that train, plane, or automobile didn't exist. Mm -hmm.